Good happy Monday evening, June 8, 2020. I'm Riley King, and welcome to this Monday evening edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Monday evening, so let's begin. First step. We begin with COVID-19 in New Hampshire, what you need to know, information. Let's take a look at that right now. And here's a look at that information for all of you right now. There are 5,043 number of people in New Hampshire have tested positive for COVID-19. 2,700,000. 93 number of people in the United States who have tested positive. 286 number of deaths from COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 489 number of people who have been hospitalized with COVID-19 in New Hampshire. And 112, 466 number of deaths from COVID-19 in New, in the United States. Now let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire, current cases of COVID-19 in New Hampshire. Manchester, 345. Let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire, total cases of COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 1303. Now let's take a look at this chart here. Let's start with the first chart here. New cases each day in New Hampshire in the purple. Daily new positive COVID-19 cases in the orange. New hospitalizations in the red or the deaths. Let's take a look at this chart here. Current cases in the purple. Daily new positive COVID-19 cases in the orange. New hospitalizations in the red or the deaths. Let's take a look at this chart here. Total cases in the purple. Total positive COVID-19 cases in the orange, total hospitalizations in the red deaths in the blue covered. And now let's take a look at this chart here. Age group of cases, female and male of cases, and risk information. Let's take a look at this chart here. Infection, hospitalizations, and death. Let's take a look at this chart here. Deaths, percent of New Hampshire population, race slash ethnicity of cases, and hospitalizations. And your common symptoms, fever, lack of smell, cough, chills, and difficult breathing. How it spreads. And prevention tips. And be sure to stay with the Riley King Network for the latest of your COVID-19 information. Keen businesses participate in a program to ensure safety for staff and customers. Businesses who take part in Keen Safe Program pledge to follow CDC state guidelines. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Ray Brewer. Heading off to college is a big step. So is paying for it. When federal loans, grants, and scholarships won't cover... For business owner Ted McGreer, participating in the Keen Safe program is a no-brainer. I think it's really important that we uh, send a message to our customers or potential customers that our store and our staff take pride in following guidelines to keep them safe and keep our staff safe. The program was devised by the City of Keene. Those businesses that take part pledge to follow CDC guidelines along with any recommendations by the state. For Hannah Grimes Marketplace, taking the pledge makes a lot of sense. We deal with a lot of older people. We deal with a lot of, you know, immune compromised people. And so far, everyone seems to be buying in to the program. I haven't run into anybody who's not thinking that this is what we should do in terms of keeping everything 
disinfected and the masks. The pub restaurant has been a fixture in the Keene community for 50 years. They said the pledge is a way to make sure that everyone feels comfortable. We miss our customers and we wanted them to come back, but we wanted to make sure that the customers were safe as well as the employees. Uh, so far, the businesses are not reporting any problems except for some people who refuse to wear masks. They're told they can't enter the stores. However, the owner of the shoe store has set up a couple of chairs outside for those customers. Reporting live in Manchester, Ray Brewer, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Eleven year olds found safe after becoming separated from adults while hiking in Plastow. Pair made way out of woods after several hours, sought help from nearby home, officials say. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. ending to a scary situation for one New Hampshire family, two 11-year-old children were found safe after becoming separated from the adults they were hiking with in the Plastow Town Forest. After nearly five hours, the children made their way out of the woods and sought help from people at a nearby home, and they were not hurt. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Happy ending to that story there. And now let's take a look at the U.S. stock market and see how the U.S. stock market closed for this Monday evening. And here's a look at your U.S. stock market for all of you for this Monday evening. Your Dow Jones Industrial Average closed in the green went up. Your Nasdaq closed in the green went up. S&P 500 closed in the green went up. Gold closed in green went up. Oil closed in the green went down. U.S. 10 year closed flat. Euro slash USD closed in green went up. And VIX closed in the green and went up. S&P 500 erases its losses for the year as stocks rally on reopening optimism. The stock market rallied once again on Monday pushing the S&P 500 into the green for the year as Benchmark completed its wild round trip aimed the coronavirus pandemic. Investors are growing more and more optimism about the speedy economic recovery as the state continues to reopen. New York City enters phase one of reopening. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. A landmark day here in New York. After nearly three months of stay-at-home orders, the city is entering phase one of reopening. Hundreds of thousands of workers will be commuting back into the city. It comes as other areas of the country see an uptick in new coronavirus cases. This morning in New York City, day one of phase one. Once the epicenter of the COVID-19 pandemic, the city is taking its first steps towards reopening today. This is a moment that every New Yorker should celebrate as our achievement together. As many as 400,000 people are expected to be back at work, including manufacturers and construction workers, and stores can now open for curbside pickup. So we're looking forward to see, seeing our regular customers yeah. come back. Public transit is ready with new social distancing guidelines in place. Hand sanitizers and masks will be available at stations, while trains and buses will continue to be sanitized overnight. One thing I'm concerned about off the bat is mass transit, MTA. I don't know if you could physically distance yourself in those cramped subways. 
And so a lot of this is going to come down to human behavior. Officials warn the pandemic is not over. The death toll in the U.S. now climbing past 110,000. At least 18 states now seeing an increase in new cases. South Carolina seeing its highest single-day increase so far. In Texas, Dallas and Houston also seeing an uptick in cases. And as crowds gather across the country to protest the killing of George Floyd, officials are growing more concerned about another surge in cases. In the meantime, landmarks across New York City shining blue and gold Sunday night in honor of the sacrifice New Yorkers have made to flatten the curve of COVID-19 cases. We bent the curve. We intended to flatten to get to a plateau. We bent it. And look at the rest of the country. We are curve benders, if there is such a thing. In Kansas City, officials have issued a warning to people at a protest on May 31st. A protester there who did not wear a mask has now tested positive for the virus. Hi, everyone. George. De okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And thank you for watching this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast. Right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your evening. And I'll see you back here tomorrow for another newscast. Good night and bye everyone.